Hey, what's up everybody? Got an episode of War Putty's Cutlery Corner here. Show you some really nice high-end knives made by Gil Hibben. And some really nice low-end knives made by Pakistan. As I used to hate Pakistan knives. Their quality used to just be absolutely horrible. And now I'm actually liking them because they make crazy shit like I'm going to show you here. One of them's like, I basically deemed the name holy fucking shit. <laughs> it's big, man. And they got a sheath for it so you can carry the fucker with pride, man. It's, a, it's one of those ones, man, if you got in a fight, you'd get it halfway off the sheath and you'd be dead. <laughs> That's about it, man. It's that big. Anyways, show you the two that I paid the least amount of money for here. I'd swear I paid about five bucks a piece for these, which is just crazy when you see how big these are. I remember, man, it was a couple of cute girls. I got money, and they were generous. <laughs> As they didn't want much for their knives. I think they, their dad must have had a business or whatever that sold out, so he was just getting rid of his overstocks in here, man. Go to the swap meet and see what you can get. It was very weird day at the swap meet as it was knives and Britney Spears looking type clothing. <laughs> really strange mix since it was a couple of cute girls. Anyways, first one in the sheath and when I say big, I don't lie, I love big freaking knives. The bigger the better. This one, I love the blade on this. Simplistic but cool. Got some nice tool work here where they used a large file and then a small file. Get that nice pattern going. Nice freaking grip. And all three of these types that I'm going to show you, they have the uh, rainbow wood type handles. And basically, how they make that get really thin slices of wood that has been dyed in different colors, layer it up as it glue it together, and then when you sand it down, it gives that really cool rainbow pattern throughout. Really easy to make, as I've made it before. It's not hard at all. It's almost you make it as thin as just the layers that you'd have in like plywood. Real thin. And they definitely did it on this. It's pretty thin slices, but it looks really good. show their damn lighting. There it shows a little bit of it. There's the first knife. And mind y'all, I got quite a few to show you here. Not a ton, but enough to where it's going to be a long video. I had one of those Murphy's Law things to where <laughs> did the video. It came out damn near 30 minutes, and holy shit, if the audio wasn't cut out as my webcam likes to cut out on the audio and I don't know until I finish the damn video. So hopefully we'll do it this time. Pissed me off again. There's another one. Similar design, Road Warrior style. Same kind of cheap leather sheath. Nice upswept type blade. Just freaking sick. This is one, they made it to where it looks like it's sharp on top, but it's not. It's blunt. Just simplistic on the quality for it, but cool. <laughs> I like the look. Definitely something cool to have in a collection. Actually, I'm going to show this to you in the sheath first, just like the others. Hold it up weird so you can think it's not that big. Okay. <laughs> really freaking big. Okay, everybody. You can say, holy fucking shit now. This man, 
I cannot remember what I paid for this, but it was dirt cheap, man. I, all I remember is the lady I got it from, this was the only knife she had. <laughs> Which is like, for only having one knife, <laughs> have the most extreme knife. And it was a day where the cops were hitting the swap me, just kind of just looking for anybody so many illegal stuff hits uh, this kind of stuff is legal here as long as it's collector or you have it exposed in a sheath as it's got a fucking sheath as the, the Pakistanis intended you to carry this because this is another Pakistan but I freaking love it and man even if you did want to pull this on somebody you would mess up your freaking hands or another part of your body trying to get this out of the sheath fast. You got to take it out real carefully because it is sharp here. This area is sharp. This area is sharp. That is sharp. That's sharp. And then it's got little pointy things all over. So definitely one just to have as a novelty item for collectors. Very cool. This is the coolest Pakistan one I own, let alone some of my swords. Nick. I'm going to get into a couple of the oddballs. Found another one of my bayonets, and this one? I don't remember where I got it. I didn't get this. I think I got this from uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. That's where I got it. And it was dirt cheap. They had a whole bunch of these and they were selling them for like freaking $9. I just cannot remember what country this one's from. So if you guys recognize it, give me the name of the country it's from and then, or just the type, and I'll look it up from there. I looked it up before, but that was on my old PC, and I lost all that information. Anyways, it's the knife itself, and this one is definitely hunting knife size, hence they had it cheap and they were selling out, and I was lucky to get one. Definite oddball. The handle, looking, I thought it was Bakelite when I saw it on their, on their website for the image, but it's not. It's basically like a composite type stuff that they made up, made out of wood chips. Finally, like more like splinters, like wood splinters of wood mixed with some kind of a resin where they form the handle and then just sand it down. As you can really see all the wood chips and stuff in it, splinters of wood here and there, but it's smooth. And then they just rivet it on to the knife itself in two pieces, as this one is about, eh, I'd say about a centimeter more than being half tang going up in the handle. This is a real sturdy knife for what it is. And another oddball thing, pretty much every bayonet in my collection, collection unless it's one of the socket ones or whatever, an oddball. They all go on the end of the barrel like this. This one, opposite. It's like if this was the thing under the barrel, it goes on like that. And then the locking mechanism is up towards the blade. So, definitely different there. And pretty much a single ledger. And this area is all blunt. It is made to where they probably could have sharpened it. And Whoever had this did it, as this one was obviously used. The sheath really shows that it was used. All leather sheath. And pop this in here again. Old style snap to where it's just a ball type snap. I'll just pull the leather over it. And they did do good on the sheath for what it is. They got it kind of curved here for the belt loop. So, if you're having to take it out really fast in a fight, just pull it out like this and have it out instead of straight up. So, they did good on that. Just don't know the name. I'm on thinking this is from 1980. I may be wrong on that. That may be a serial, but it looks like it was stamped 1980. As there is a stamp here, 
with a couple of looks like crossed gladiator swords, OTN, some kind of symbol, the KV, and then it's like a 1980 slash two. A lot of it's faded, so really can't tell. It may be older. So that's that one. Now this one, brand spanking new. This one's mint condition. I just grabbed it and put it away and forgot about it. I remember how much I paid for it though. It was 20 bucks and got it because I like automatics. OTFs and this is one of the ones that's spring assisted so it's not a true switchblade automatic you have to give it a little bit of help but uh, very small amount of help as far as I'm concerned and like I'd want to carry this around anyways in my pocket as <laughs> I always go for the extreme pretty damn big for a pocket knife and it's made to look like it's double-edged, but it's not. Sharp on the bottom, and then blunt on top. But not so blunt to where it takes away from the look. It's just enough to where there's no edge. And this one is made by an oddball company, too. It's called Duck. Their logo is a duck, mallard, swimming in water. And it's just this high-performance stainless steel knives. Made in China, everything's made in China, but this is not that bad. Linear lock. And open it a few times here. The opening. You just press on this part of the cross guard, and it just flips open. It's got it to where the spring has just got enough of a coil to where once you get it started, the coil spring finishes it off instead of just pressing a button and having it be totally automatic. Fast enough. Then the handles, Picarda inserts on each side, and this one, I did find sites that sell these, but not this one. It's the smaller ones. This one, they either quit making it, as you said, hey, if you're a collector, get this because it may not be around anymore, and I think the guy was right. I had a hard time trying to find the actual duck knives, let alone this one. No success, so got a bit of a collectible already. And these, say I paid about 20 bucks. Yes, we got them wholesale, and obviously did not pay that much for all of them. And the site that I found, I could not remember the site. I could say it's just look up Duck Brand Knife or Duck Spring Assisted Knife. Assisted opening knife or just duck. <laughs> Don't look up fuck because you'll find other things other than knives, which uh, well, that might be good too, but uh, definitely make sure you're spawning duck. And the ones that I was spawning, unbelievably cheap for a pocket knife. And really, for what you get, some of them look really nice. And they're all spring assist. A lot of them have that double edged look. And just to give you an idea on price, one of them was like. $13, not counting the shipping, so right around the $20 range. So that's that. Show you guys a United knockoff. I have no idea what I paid for this. I've had this for a while. I just had it packed away. I believe this is just called the United Horus Knife. As this came out around the same time the Stargate or Stargate SG-1 as the handle looks like the alien from the original Stargate that was wearing the Horus uniform. Has all the cool design patterns on it. And then this side and that side have the Eye of Ra, some Egyptian symbols, wings cut into it. Just cool looking. And other than this being a little bit lower quality, not that much, it's the China knockoff. Just between this one and the one they had for United, this one you get a sheath. The United one, you get a wooden stand. 
I don't even know if that one was sharp. A lot of their knives were meant to be displayed so it would be a blunt edge. Pretty cool. Not a leather sheath though, it's some kind of thick vinyl, but not bad. And has, <laughs> can't get it to show up there. Has kind of a wing pattern going down the bottom part of the sheath there. It's just not stamped in too heavy. This one, I cannot remember which what they called this. This one, I still think you can get this if you get on a knife site and just look up United Cutlery stuff. It's kind of a medieval type look. Pretty cool. Another one I got dirt cheap at a pawn shop or whatever. Cannot remember how much. Has an eagle pommel. It's an eagle's head. Then has the talons for the cross guard. Double edged dagger with a blood groove. And the usual United Cutlery style sheet that's all custom made for this particular knife. Okay, now that I've gotten into 60 minutes, now I'm going to start showing you the really cool stuff. Got one more just outright United one to show you before I get into the Hibben ones that I have. This one is just beautiful. Simplistic, but beautiful. And this one, I was trying to look it up to see how much it's worth now, because I've had it for a while. And... <laughs> doesn't help when you're trying to look up a knife that is called Iron Cross and find a particular one as there are tons of knives that they have deemed the name Iron Cross. This is more of a hunting type bowie knife slash dagger or whatever. It has that western look. And looks pretty freaking basic when it's in the sheath. This is one where I looked at it and then did like a double take. It's like, eh, I really don't like the style. And then it's like, dude. <laughs> Pulled it out of the sheath and showed it to me. It was like, damn, that's sick. Really, really nice Damascus blade. Just beautiful patterning there with the Damascus. As uh, hard to show how nice it looks in this video. The lighting and the webcam just takes away from it, but to the naked eye, it just looks freaking beautiful. Sharp as all frickin' hell. And sheath, lanyard straight so you can tie it off on your leg. And if anything, the sheath is made out of really good leather. Belt loop here. <laughs> they did not intend that to come off as it is riveted on, backed up with washers. I've always liked United Cutlery, man. They always made nice, high-quality knives. Clear back to when I first started collecting in the 80s. Yeah, speaking of United, these are United Cutlery knives designed by Gil Hibben. It's Hibben Knives. And this happens to be the second pattern of his first fantasy knife. When he was just getting into making them. Silver Shadow 2, and I've got a pair of these. I'll show you the really nice one. Actually, I'll just show you the nice one, save time now. They're both the same. One of them is kind of not beat up, but been used as somebody sharpened it, and it's just been used. But I got it as a freebie. It was in the bottom of a fishing box that I got at a pawn shop full of tackle at the bottom of all the tackle. They didn't even know it was in there. Didn't take time to look through it. They were just selling it as a fishing box for a tackle that I paid like, I don't even think I paid 10 bucks for it and got the knife with it. And these have been seen in a lot of movies. A lot of hidden knives have been used in the movies, not just Mortal Kombat. Pretty cool little dagger, kind of like throwing dagger sized. Just very high quality. Wire wrapped handle, pommels all thrown out, cross guards all thrown out. Custom sheath with not a belt loop but a metal belt clip. And 
these, for a little while, they were starting to get kind of scarce, and now all of a sudden I'm starting to see some of them spring up on eBay. It's just depending on if you want one that's mint condition or one that's been open, that's going to be your price there. And for mint condition, any of these older hidden knives, you're going to pay a lot. Especially for the last one I'm going to show you. That one, I'm going to say right off the bat, out of all my fantasy knives, not including swords, just knives, it is the best piece that I own. It is just freaking beautiful. It's one that I just keep it in the box. All these I keep in the box. Especially this one I'm going to show you too because it's kind of scarce for this particular pattern. It's just... <laughs> Trying to keep them in good shape, especially in the desert here with all of our problems with dust and dirt and whatnot. This one, knife and sheath's in great shape, but the box is a little beat up. This is Gil Hibbit Double Shadow Fantasy Knife, and this is not the one that's like the first one I showed you there, where it's just got wire wrapped around the handle. This is the black handle with gold wire variation. And then the pommel, cross guard, have this kind of metallic black coating, like metallic black chrome. Really cool. Thick freaking blade on this, man. All these knives have really thick blades. Double edge, split down the middle style blade. Say, really freaking thick. Same thing. It's UC 453 stainless steel. And then the sheath, just as nice as the knife. They really did get on the sheath, or he really did get on the sheath. All custom for it. <laughs> now, there you go. <laughs> Got the split in the sheath. So it looks like you're staring right through the knife blade, and then another little hole up top for that top hole. Same type of clip as the last one I showed you, metal belt clip stitched in and riveted. This is logo and everything, it's nice and decent looking box. This one, if you find one and you can afford it, and it's mint, get it, because I seldom see this particular one. The only time I've seen it spring up most, mostly is he did it with this type, where it's the black handle with the gold wire, and then he did this standard one where it's just strictly wire wrapped handle and had it to where it was like a box set to where he had each type of fantasy knife in a box and not cheap. Better off getting these individual unless somebody's crazy enough to sell the box set cheap. And those you don't see too much either. this one, right off the bat, he made a sword of this, I cannot remember how big it was, it was a short sword so it could be anywhere from like 25 inches long up to maybe 30, and when you see this, any collectors that don't have hidden stuff yet or are just getting into it, you're going to be looking for that sword like I do, man, and good luck, the sword was very limited, and this is just this is a draw-dropping knife. Beautiful, beautiful knife. Anyways, show you the box here. This is the 1997 edition of the Hidden Hornet. And our box definitely shows that it's been around since 97. It's not tore up, but it shows age. But I've been able to keep this in mint condition. This is one man I just keep it in the box. <laughs> I probably never get rid of it because it's just, it's too freaking beautiful. Has it to where, I don't know if that, I cannot remember if that is two different types of wood or if he had it to where he stained some of it and then kept the rest of it light. Because if that's two different types of wood, damn. Got it to where, the wood grain pattern is the same on each one of these pieces. So that's what I'm thinking he did was just stain it 
and then it's got either brass or copper washers in between each one of those pieces and then a little bit just below the pommel and at the cross guard there looks really really cool there's that nice tip on there to make it look like the end of a stinger or a hornet custom hornet logo there and then above it says hidden knives and then yellow hidden initials and this one just like that last one the sheath is just as freaking badass as the knife Decent size. It's chunky, heavy. I'd say the steel they used for the blade is about the same thickness as that last one, which they'd have to have it that thick because of how much it tapers down on the blade to make this look like the tail or the stinger or whatever. And then the two claws or whatever here. They're not sharp, which is a good thing because they're outside the sheath, and then all this is just all chrome plated. And it just says designed by Gil Hibben of Hibben Knives. UC 985 stainless. Show you close up of the sheath here. Double snap has a very cool tribal pattern on it that starts below the Hornet logo. Really nice leather. Free rivets to hold on the loop for the belt. Just really nice. And these, this was the first one I looked up. To get one, probably as minty as this. With a good box, you're looking at around 200 bucks or more, depending on the insanity of the sailor on uh, eBay. As uh, some of them ask way too much, but right around the $200 range for this. As there's so many freaking collector's knives out there, man, the, the prices have just fallen a lot. Another place that you might check, I don't know if they have them anymore, but uh. Sometimes, like the bayonet, the Smoky Mountain Knife works. It's just, if you see it and you want to buy it, make sure that it doesn't say second. If it says second on it for anybody that's starting collecting and wants to get a really nice one, that basically means that it can have a problem with the sheath to where they stitched it wrong, or it could have been dropped where it's got a ding in it, scratch on the blade, anything. And usually, when they're still selling it, it's usually a minor defect, but that means it's not going to be a mint condition piece. Basically, it'd be like buying a mint condition one and then using it as a hammer. A light hammer. <laughs> and if it's really cheap, possibly go for it. Sometimes you can do pretty good on scratch and dent type stuff to where it's just a little defect because sometimes it would be so freaking minor to where well it didn't come out perfect so we're gonna knock the price and minor I mean really freaking minor especially when it has to do with the sheath it could be something to where maybe this pattern here or the initials didn't quite get stamped in right or whatever I can't remember if it was a $200 one or $300 one. There are some that say first run or whatever on the blade below his initials and the hidden logo stamp. Those are worth more on any of his knives. Anything that says first run when it comes to this stuff is going to be worth more. I really don't own too many of them, but uh, I think that's the same with... Uh, the guy he partnered up with with some of the newer stuff, um, yeah, Kit Ray. I think he, he's the same thing. If it's a certain type, he'll have his first run stamp on it, so it's worth more or whatever.
And Kit Ray, man, I like his knives, but I like his older knives. Some of the newer ones that have come out, they're really cool looking. And I'll occasionally see them in the pawn shop, but the problem with those, whatever they use in United Cutlery or whatever they're going through now to chrome this stuff, with our kind of weather or, or whatever, well, shit, any kind of weather, it can peel off. And I've not had any of that trouble with these older Hibben ones. But then, big difference on when these came out and the ones that are out now. When this thing first came out, damn, <laughs> very, very expensive, especially if you got one of the special editions to where all this area here was gold or whatever or different types of wood like high-end type wood in the handles or custom sheath or whatever you like to do some of that too so <laughs> definitely we'll see on YouTube so-called oh you're allowed to do longer videos now cuz I'm almost up to 32 minutes here creeping up slowly so said it'd be a long video guys hope you enjoyed it catch y'all next time